in Florida, anyone can operate a private school. Lieutenant Samuni starts punching me multiple times in the head. No license. At this time, I have my face covered. No qualifications. And I'm just taking the shots nonstop. And little oversight. This school needs to be closed. These boys need to be saved. This is a story about alleged child abuse that's been going on for more than 20 years. It's a story about lies, stolen valor, and the inability of the state of Florida to shut down a school that the Department of Children and Family says poses a risk to children. We, we were all, in a sense, duped by the, this tangled web of lies. This is the story about the Southeastern Military Academy. Good evening, I'm Wanda Moore. That school is located in Port St. Lucie. Contact 5's four-month-long investigation shows abuse allegations against the Southeastern Military Academy kept coming over the years, but the school remained open. And get this, the school received around $250,000 in taxpayer money. I am Austin Griffin. I am 15 years old. Come on, Owen. Austin and his two younger brothers attended the Southeastern Military Academy, or SEMA, from 2015. The small campus in Port St. Lucie might not look like much, but the school promises on its website it's, quote, among the best schools in the world. A private, Christian-based military school with a mission to focus on educational issues and teach self-confidence and self-discipline. But Austin says he quickly realized this school was not what he and his mom thought it was. The colonel has brought out the shackle and showed the other recruits how they put them on. He says the colonel told students the shackles are put on kids if they run away. But it didn't end there. Austin says the teachers became violent. I begged him not to hit me. It was a normal day at the academy. Austin was getting his hair cut when he smiled at something his teacher, Lieutenant Gary Looney, said. He's like, oh, you think that's funny? And Lieutenant Looney starts punching me multiple times in the head. At this time, I have my face covered with my arms, and I'm just taking the shots nonstop. He asked for help at his store down the street. I could barely press the numbers on the uh, phone they let me use. I was scared not only for me, but for my brothers. What was your feeling about what would ha happen if you went back? I was terrified if I went back that I would be hurt even more, if not killed. You actually feared for your life? Yes. At the hospital, the doctor said Austin had a head injury, cervical strain, and back contusion. Austin's mom was shocked. I mean, these are people I trusted to help my children, not to hurt them. Austin isn't the only one with these stories. Like, my son didn't go to school with those. He came home with those. A week before Austin says he was punched, another student says he was abused by a different teacher, Jonathan Weirman. And Jonathan grabbed my son by his arm and was dragging him across the yard. And I'm yelling at him, like, let go of my son. And he wouldn't let go. The mother wanted to stay anonymous, fearing retaliation by the teachers. Um, I'm sad. I'm sad that I didn't recognize this before. A month after the alleged incident occurred, DCF investigated the case and said they found no injuries. But their investigation found the school's conduct was, quote, egregious. I'm calling because we asked DCF how many complaints have come forward against SEMA, which had just 12 students last year. In total, DCF investigated 48 child abuse allegations at SEMA since 1994. That makes it an average of two abuse allegations per year. Of the 28 reports Contact 5 was able to review, 16 had substantiated findings. Investigators found evidence of cruel and unusual punishment, such as choking children to unconsciousness, punching, and kicking. 2008, a boy was held in shackles for 12 days. 2005, staff member punched student in the mouth and kneed him in the chest. 2004, staff members kicked and choked a student. The list goes on and on. DCF investigators concluded in their 2008 report that the risk to the remaining children at the school was high. 
This is Alan and his son Jonathan Weirman, both teachers at the school, and yes, these are their mugshots. They face charges of domestic battery, kidnapping, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon in the past, none of which happened at the school. They were never convicted, and none of this kept them away from the classroom. Coming up after the break, we ask state officials why this school remains open. Welcome back. A school that the Department of Children and Families claimed to be a high risk for children, but it was never shut down. The question remains, why? I asked those running the school, Alan and his wife Molly Weirman, for answers. Hi there. My Hi. name is Wanda Moore. I'm a reporter with WPTV, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if there's someone who could talk to us no. about the allegations. No. No response? So let's back up. Remember that claim about being the best school in the world? It's amazing that they're operating from an academic standpoint because it doesn't seem that these children are actually receiving an education. How is it even possible that they're continuing to open their doors day after day? But the schooling, the education part is a joke. Parents say SEMA students don't get a high school diploma and the Department of Education tells us they're not tracking diplomas from private schools. SEMA doesn't have a license. Turns out, private schools in Florida don't need one. Is that shocking to you? Very. The teachers at the school are not licensed. The school is not licensed. But that's all legal. It is legal. State Senator Linda Stewart says there is simply a lack of oversight over private schools. These kids are, are the future of this country, and yet anybody can come in and ruin their future. We uncovered SEMA makes many false claims, starting with the fact that Colonel Alan Weirman is not a colonel. We contacted the military officials and they responded saying that they have no information on his military service. It downgraded the sacrifice that my family members made in the service. On the bottom of their website, it says this school is recruiting for the U.S. Army. Officials with the Army told us that is not true. They lie that they will do anything to get you to sign that paper. What is real is the amount of scholarship money SEMA collects each year. Austin received a McKay scholarship of $8,159. According to the Department of Education, the school has taken in more than $250,000 worth of scholarship money since 2014. They have not only perpetrated a fraud on the students, and the families that attend, but also on the state of Florida. Port St. Lucie police found probable cause in Austin's case to charge the teachers, Gary Looney and Jonathan Weirman. Their report called school officials argumentative and uncooperative. Some students said they were told by school officials to not talk to police. The state attorney declined to prosecute, saying some students said Austin was never punched and adding that it could be difficult in cases such as this to draw the line between prohibited child abuse and reasonable discipline of a child. Alan Weirman and his wife Molly run the school and they both refused to talk to us for this story. But in 2013, when DCF sued trying and failing to get the school shut down, Alan complained loudly. Of all the schools in the state of Florida, why am I singled out for judicial proceedings? They verified us for bizarre punishment because of the shackles. Both the Portland Police Department, Detective Bureau, and the state attorney found no abuse. We handed State Senator David Simmons and Linda Stewart the list of abuse allegations against SEMA. I'm astounded by this. DCF and the Department of Education both refused to do an interview with us. So we approached the chair of the Education Board directly. Because you know it doesn't fall within our specific jurisdiction. Our investigation found private schools are no man's land with hardly any oversight. Do you believe that enough is currently being done to protect children in private schools in Florida? The answer is no. I believe that we need uh, to do more. Since SEMA didn't have a license to begin with, the Department of Education can take a license away, but it can cut the funding through the state scholarship programs. I, I think we should certainly hold all schools accountable who are collecting public funds. But SEMA continued to collect scholarship money up until July 11, 2018. Officials said the school refused to supply information about Austin's case. That's when SEMA, after years of alleged abuse, withdrew from the state scholarship program. DCF 
should have given a report to the Department of Education and Department of Education should have called a meeting and decided whether this school was eligible for continued vouchers. But under current law, DCF is not obligated to notify the Department of Education about abuse allegations at private schools. For lawmakers like Stewart and Simmons, it's obvious something needs to change. There has to be more accountability and that we have to keep our children safe. We need to do something uh, to uh, to get rid of the bad apples. DCF investigated Austin's case and concluded that there are, quote, significant concerns for the safety of the students at the school. Uh, I don't want any of the people involved able to hurt any more children, ever. And any kid who has to go through this, which hopefully nobody else does anymore. Austin and his mom want to make sure that this time, SEMA closes for good. After many months of seeking a response from those at the school, Gary Looney, one of the teachers we profiled, reached out to me over email. He denied the allegations that he ever punched Austin Griffin, saying, quote, I did nothing. I asked him for an interview, and he declined. The school is currently closed for this year, but school leaders told the Department of Education they're planning on reopening. And the online version of this story, we're breaking down the differences between public and private schools. You can find that under the Investigations tab. I'm Contact 5 investigator Wanda Moore. Thank you for joining us.